Also, speaking of being a genius, I have cleverly discovered a method by which I can actually see chat and the game at the same time, which instead of having my phone on the desk in front of me... By the way, if anyone had requests about names and things, now is your chance. Uh, but yeah, so instead of having my phone on the desk in front of me and looking down, which meant I kept forgetting to check chat, um, I just uh, blue tacked my phone to the front of my screen. Because um, Holloway girls make do. I usually go for deprived because I'm bad at making decisions, but I've never really done a proper miracle build. I usually go for sorcery or strength of arms. So, any preferences, or do I need to actually make decisions? Which is a terrible thing to request of me. Alright, fine, deprived it is. Oh, okay, cleric then. Amazing timing, okay. Um, let's see, most of these are useless. I always take. I usually take the pendant for flex purposes. Or the old witch's ring. I'll grab the ring. Oh, you should definitely give, um... Well, okay, this is clearly a strong contender for Tiny Head. I usually don't go for goof builds, but why not? I like the Far East Traveller. I'm gonna shut my eyes and pick one of these at random. Thoralyn Cleric, what are the chances? This is amazing. Okay, uh, so, name. Let's go. Sister. Uh. Sister Anna. Oh, it doesn't let me have enough. Okay. Sister Anna, it is. Sister Frida, will that fit? does. Sister Freed is the boss from 3, right? It's been a while since I played it. Or is that a is that a Bloodborne thing? Are you crossing the streams? I like the braided haircut personally. I'm taking suggestions, but I'm not a democracy. Yeah, I only played Ashes of Ariandel once, I think. In the age of Can you see my cursor wiggling around on the screen? Because I think I figured out how to make that not happen. Shrouded by fog. A land of grey crags. Fantastic. Arch trees and everlasting dragons. Since Emission hasn't seen this, I might as well let the cutscene play out, although it's like five minutes long. But then there was fire. And with fire came disparity, heat and cold, life and death, and of course, light and dark. Then from the dark they came and found the souls of lords within the flame. <laughs> Nito, the first of the dead. The witch of Isolith and her daughters of chaos. Gwyn, the Lord of Sunlight, and his faithful knights, and the furtive pygmy, so easily forgotten. Do you mean that line, the furtive pygmy, or do you mean... With the strength of lords, the other line, they challenge the dragons. Wind's mighty gods ruled apart their stone skins. The witches weaved great firestorms. Nito unleashed a miasma of death and disease. And Seath, the 
skills betrayed his own, and the dragons were no more. Soon the flames will fade, and only dark will remain. Even now, there are only embers, and man sees not light, but only endless nights. And amongst the living are seen carriers of the accursed dark side. Yes, indeed. The That's dark the sign brands the undead. <laughs> yes, indeed. And in this land, the undead are corralled and led to the north. Where they are locked away. To await the end of the world. This is your fate. I have no idea which your other favourite line is. I know that we yes indeed back and forth from time to time, but... Knowing things about my friends? That's gay. Oh no, bots. Okay, does anyone know how to make bots not happen? Anyway, I will not be playing this game with the degree of respect to which it's entitled, I'm just going to zoom through it like I tend to. Um, because I have... Oh yeah, found the bands. See, this is literally only like the third time I've ever streamed, so... I... Yeah, alright. Clever clogs. Um, but yeah, so this is like literally only, only the third time I've ever streamed, so I've never had to ban something before. I didn't even know it was a problem, although really I guess that was naive of me. Also, I'm just going to real quick switch off the Steam overlay so that I don't get bothered by pop-ups. Although that was convenient because it reminded me I should wish her a happy birthday. How do I make that not happen? Stream overlay disabled. But yeah, so it's kind of weird coming back. Uh, we janky? Are we good? What's going on? I think that's because I alt tabbed. Um, it was fine when I ran through here earlier on my testing. But, yeah, so it's really weird coming back to Dark Souls because this was my comfort game for such a long time and I was so obsessed with it. And yet, I'm so much better at video games now than I was then. I've been playing games since I was like six and yet, in the past two years, I have increased like ten times in terms of basic skill. Where's the guy? There he is. So it's kind of weird to think that if I went back and did a long, in-depth Dark Souls Let's Play again, would my critical opinions have changed? I'd still be... I'd be physically better at the game, but would I be as able to wank endlessly about uh, my fascinating theories about what things mean and what things are and how really true meaning is impossible and the purpose of this game is not to have true meaning but to be interpreted by the players and all of this other stuff and what you can infer from things and see from stuff all 
of the uh, doing literary criticism, bleh, bleh. all of the doing literary criticism to games nonsense that I loved and still do love, but have I guess somewhat of a lesser ability to do than I used to. Do I start with any miracles? I do. I've got heal, but I don't. Do I have? Uh, do I have? Oh no, you don't get the catalyst until upstairs. Hmm. I wonder what's up here. I'm sure it's not a clever trap. I do love that you can kick these bricks around. They lock into place after a second, but... Oh, Hello, Oscar. You. You're no hollow. Thank goodness. I'm done for, I'm afraid. I'll die soon. I'm just going to skip all this, actually, because I've heard it ten million times. Regrettably, I have failed in my mission. But there is a thou who art up and thine one. I do love the idea that this guy is oh. trapped in infinite time loops as the player comes no, through again and again and again. Um, which is happening mechanically and literally and in the narrative, because this game is an infinite time loop as the universe goes through endless kelpers. But, Oscar, I love you so much. No, I have a real thing for, like, noble... Don't actually noble knights, especially when they're in worlds that aren't noble. That's the sound of him dying, and that's, in a second, his souls filling up my soul jar. He's only worth a hundred, so he can't have been very powerful. But yeah, um, shins of steel, tiny head, buns of red. Soon I'm dead. Actually, no, I'm undead. Come on, guys. Let's, uh, let's just do this. Let's have this done. It's not worth parrying these guys, they're a bit too... They're a bit too likely to go sicko mode when you're not expecting it, which is bad if you miss your parry and then they just kill you. They always... I do kind of wonder how much of their faculties they retain, considering they have the ability to use something as mechanically complex as a bow. Let's see if we can parry this guy. Yeah. Oh, I absolutely have a thing for women with swords as well, but I have a thing for noble bright people with swords in general. Speaking as mostly a lesbian, I am mostly into women with swords. Which results in many a sword detail. That was a bit of a weak one. I should have the light roll, but I'm never quite able to remember. Of course, not having played this in... Actually, I played this earlier this year. I used to just, like, sprint through from the start of the game all the way through to Capra Demon without dying, but... Uh, that was a while ago. Let's see how far I can get without dying, though. But, wow, things like dodge timing really do disappear over the years, huh? Yeah, that's fair. Dark Souls is... has got progressively more, um... What's the word? lenient with its rolling. I feel like later games have better uh, better iframes and um, just, you know, are easier to do in general. But they counterbalance that with much faster moving enemies regardless of size. But then those enemies have really predictable patterns of movement, so I definitely found Dark Souls 3 significantly easier than Dark Souls 1. No, okay. One of these has a secret behind it, and I can never remember which one. I have played 230-something hours of this game. Uh, not counting something on a different system, either. So, you really think I'd have internalised the secret location by now? Aha, uh -huh, here it is. That's weird, I wonder why you find it so much more difficult. I find the verisimilitude of your embodiment in Dark Souls 1 much more believable. Heavy things look heavy. Heavy swords are difficult to swing. Whereas Dark Souls 3 is a lot more kind of, um... You have flailing gibbon energy in Dark in Souls 3. In the ancient legends it is stated that one day an undead shall be chosen. Leave the undead asylum in pilgrimage to the land of the ancient lords. 
Lordran. I'm pretty sure I spent like a whole five minutes riffing on the fact that they named the uh, the named the land of the ancient lords Lordran when I did my old Let's Play. But um, I'm more forgiving of it now. Oh, this is like coming home. It's delightful. Anyway, it looks like I'm the chosen undead, so that's something I can crow about. Did I say that already? Hey, man, what's up? Well, what do we have here? You must be a new arrival. Let me guess. Fate of the undead, right? Well, you're not the first. But there's no... This guy has a ton of voice lines, but he speaks really slowly, and I'm, I'm in the mood to go fight things, so... He basically is the tutorial NPC. He's there to give you cryptic hints about how the game works. And um, he slowly becomes more and more depressed over the course of the game until he eventually gives in to despair and loses his mind. Which is a fundamental component of the... What would you even call it? The um, thematic existence of this world. It's kind of uh, fabric of reality runs on certain... Certain things, one of which is the necessity of change and the poison of stasis. Hmm. There's like a ton of items in Firelink Shrine to go grab. I, can I remember where all of them are? That is the real question. Oh yeah, creepy laughs are the, the fundamental Dark Souls experience. <laughs> Pretty much everyone has a unique creepy laugh. I feel like if you make a habit of playing Dark Souls a lot you should develop your own, but I never did. Which speaks ill of me, I suppose. Actually, I think my Dark Souls laugh is the Dark Souls laugh from the parody of Dark Souls where an old lady bot generation voice thing reads out a text parody of Dark Souls. It's very good. You should go find it. I'm not going to try and find a Tumblr post while playing a video game. That seems... Oh, hey, it's you. This guy's a real dick. Everyone hates him. Hello there. I believe we are not acquainted. I am Petrus of Thoroughland. Have you business with us? If not, I'd prefer to keep a distance, if possible. He's basically like, oh, Hello you're kind of gross. I nasty realize look at that you. I have requested, but I also want you to know that it is not meant in ill will. Here, take this as a token of peace. No, go ahead. It's for a penny! Wow, thank you. I'm not a beggar. Oh my. Oh, I know. I have to await my com- So would- He does offer to teach you miracles, which is weird, well. considering what he ends up doing later in the game. Now, let me sh- Only the- Also, it's- he tells you he doesn't want you around because you suck, and then he's like, I'll teach you stuff, though, if you want. Um... It's, I can't afford any of his useful ones. Force is quite useful for knocking things off cliffs. Also, yes, Penis of Thoroland, very clever. I hope you're very proud of yourself. Uh, My companions, um, she is young. We are her defensive. So I'll come, come back with my miracles from him later. Effective Effectiveness will depend on my faith. The harder I believe, the harder I hit. There are a ton of NPC plotlines in Dark Souls, but they all sort of progress based on inexplicable events that are hard to predict and keep track of. It's all kind of, if you did this one thing in this one place, that'll have an effect in this other place at some point, and if you happen to arrive within a certain window, then you will have some other thing happen, and then when that other thing happens, someone will... Okay, I thought I switched off the uh, thing. Oh well. I definitely did. I guess you need to restart the game for it to stop doing the um, what do you even call that? The overlaying pop-ups. So a lot of people think that this is actually um, Penis of Thoralyn's stash, because it's got his uh, it's got his weapon in it, presumably his backup Morning Star, and uh, a uh, talisman of his type. Actually, I should probably grab my talisman. Is that actually any better? Do they have the same stats. Oh, that one has better scaling. That's good to know. Yeah, you know, one morning star for each hand. Actually, I usually put that in the other hand, because it's just more convenient for me, I think, to 
to have it on the attack button. Get rid of all of these. There's also a clue to the fact that he turns out to be an absolute shithead later because he has cracked red eye orbs in his stash, if this is his stash. And the cracked red eye orbs are used to invade other players, which within the context of the game narrative are other people on other cycles of the same pattern of existence. Um, because the universe is trapped in an endless time loop due to the machinations of gods who fear change. So, these guys are actually difficult to fight at the start. Um, they're kind of there to tell you, hey, you're not supposed to go this way, but you can if you're really good at the game. But it turns out their pathing means that you can just do this. Bye! This looks to be you, guy. Which means that if you are careful, you can absolutely clear out the gra graveyard quite quickly and grab a wide variety- are you stuck? Yeah, you're stuck. Come on. So... Yeah, there's another one. Bye! Uh, when I used to play this obsessively, I used to sprint through here. I'd figured out the perfect pattern to run full pelt through the entire graveyard, grab every single item and get back out again without getting killed. However, I haven't touched this game in about six months and it hasn't been my comfort game for like four years, so I'll just kick this guy off. Oh, oh no. It's fine. I'm fine. Everything's fine. Uh, when it's only one of them, they're not so difficult to fight because you can use heavy attacks to keep them off balance, but let's not die. Ah, fuck it, let's die. I missed, fuck. They're also really easy to backstab, which I seems like something should not be true of skeletons, but apparently is. So long. Venus to Morningstar, that's my opinion. I'm just going to see how many- oh, I forgot I need to grab these. These guys don't wake up until you grab this. Nope, that's not true. Oh god, oh god, don't kill me, please. Please, I'm a priest! So, uh, to be honest, I could spend ages dicking about grabbing all these, but I don't actually need any of the items that are here, so I'll just clear it out when I come back later, because... Um, there is a very useful item that you can get very early on called the Astora. I think it's the Astora Straight Sword, which will uh, let me really fuck up undead quite easily. Which means that you can go clear out the um, that area over there. I think it's less of a back. I mean, mechanically, it's technically still a backstab because that's what it's called in the game mechanics. Um, I think it's really more of a dick move. But, yeah, so, the thing about- oh hey, there's a ghost. I do love the multiplayer mechanics in Dark Souls. You can summon in people to help you fight bosses, you can be attacked by other people uh, invading your world, and also occasionally you see ghosts of other players doing things, because time is broken. Uh, what happens when time breaks is that the universes all fade into one another in a sort of a weird existential mishmash. Um, menage our universe. There's probably a better pun to be made there, but I'm very tired and I have had one third of a glass of wine, so. Because that is all that there was. I, there actually is still a decent community of people playing Dark Souls 1, I think. Every time I've ever gone back to it, I have been invaded a couple times during a playthrough and I have found other players to summon in to help me in bosses. So there's definitely still people around. Now what am I doing? Oh, right, of course, I am looking for some humanity. Because souls and humanity are separate resources that mean different things and do different things. I think my doctor told me to go get a verte vertebra fandango once from a chiropractor, and that was why I had to walk with a cane for four years. Can I level up? I can. Will I level up? Yes. Actually, no. Let's rack up. Uh, let's get parity with these two. Oh, I can't quite afford it. That's fine. Um, I don't tend to stress too much about where I put my points when I level up, because I'm terrible like that. The advantage to using the Violent Shrine Bonfire at the start of the game is that um, 
Different bonfires can be upgraded to different levels, and depending on their level, you get, um, what do you even call it? Uh, different amounts of healing applied whenever you rest at a bonfire, at that bonfire specifically. But you need certain items to be able to upgrade them to certain levels. So all the bonfires start at one, and later you can kindle them to two, and then three, and then four. Oh, they start at one and you can kindle them once at the start, I think. So this is a tragic character that we'll probably return to later. This might or might not be an ongoing series. I'm not going to give it a scheduled time like the Hollow Knight um, run that we'll be starting on Friday. Um, this is just going to be something I'll dip into whenever and whoever is around can join me. Shipbreaker was going to be my that, but it's not playing. So... Sucks to be Shipbreaker, I guess. Doesn't get to be played by me, the best player of games in the world. Kind of a Steve Coogan intonation there, but that's okay. You know, we all have to live with the things we do in our lives. Which is another theme of this game. I have not played Hollow Knight before. I have tried to play Hollow Knight four times. Every time I've gotten about 20% of the way through the game and then I've gone, actually this is too beautiful. This is too pretty of a game. I, I can't keep going. I want to share this with people. I can't play this by myself. Hi, hello. Fredericks. I don't know if you're someone I know or if you're a rando, but welcome if you are. I don't have the key so I can't go through here. God, it's been a while since I played this. So I can't grab the straight sword until I come around from the other side, so I can't go to the catacombs early and get the cool mask that makes me better at everything. Oh well, back up the lift we go. I went on and on about this in my ancient let's play of this game, but I really love the lifts in this game. They have a physicality you don't see in a lot of game lifts. A kind of a luscious clunking with a kind of inertia as they move. So from that I'm going to assume that you are a Create and Crowbar Discord person, Fredericks? Since apropos of nothing I know from there. Aha! answering many secrets. Anyway, so since I can't go grab useful things from the place where the useful things live, I'm just going to zoom off and go see if I can make it all the way through the Undead Berg without dying. Do I remember how to do this? I do. Get wrecked, fucker. Basic crappy enemy in the game, but I still have the timing down. I'm so pleased. So... The fun thing about my old Let's Play is that I was so bad at this game back then. It was all I played for like a year before I did that Let's Play, and yet I hid behind my shield every time. I didn't understand parry mechanics, or well, I understood them, but I was bad at them. But I'm just so much better at games now, and that's really weird, which I think I was saying earlier. I mean, shield's still incredibly useful, until I find a weapon I like, like one of the swords. But, um... I did just... Ugh, I never tried to parry anything because I was just afraid that I would fuck it up and every time I tried I did fuck it up. So really what, what I should have learned from that is that confidence is what solves every problem. Oh no! So this is what we call overconfidence and it's the opposite of solving every problem. What I used to do was drop on that guy first and kill him before I did the other thing, so, um, yeah, interesting. It's a hubris. I have been hoisted on my own petard. Did you get tired of it, or was it just that that was the first boss that you couldn't really get past? That's what everyone says is the first really tough boss, but it's not, uh... See, I like to dodge and parry. I like to, um... I like to have always the fastest roll. What is uh verse hollowing, yep. Well but hollow? I have Is this a meme? I don't know from memes. I'm very sheltered. But um I was saying something about something but I've forgotten. Oh yeah, the uh gargoyle boss. That's supposedly the first really hard boss in the game, but um, I maintain that that's Capra. I've never had trouble with the with the Belfry Gargoyles. 
No, not items. Now is not the time for items. Fuck! <laughs> right, okay, let's try and do this properly. Ah, he's not gonna... He's not gonna give me the opening. Fuck it. Oh, the hollow in the well with his bum out. Yeah, he's over there. I always forget about him. This was before they added the ability to put messages that say finger butthole, I believe. There's a ton of those in Dark Souls 3. Bye. I think I'm having some input lag because half the time I'm pressing the dodge key, I'm not actually dodging. <laughs> oh yeah, horse. Horse is my favourite Dark Souls meme. Oh, okay. The backstory on that one's tough, but that's fine. Uh, oh yeah, I can grab this guy's convenient loot. Uh, yeah, speaking of hollows with their asses out. There's a hollow of... There's a, uh, fuck, no. There's a hollow... There's a pun here, but I can't make my mouth form it properly. Um, very small amount of wine should not have done this to me. Oh, I loved Sekiro. Um, I got so stuck on... Oh, what's my birthday? There it is. I got so stuck on the uh, Guardian Ape boss that I quit the game with the idea of coming back to it in two days to see if I could do a bit better once I wasn't so tilted that I was extremely angry all of the time. Um, I don't know what she said because I have ADHD and I forget what I've said the second I say it or frequently during saying it. But I'm sure I will notice when I watch this back for editing purposes. Um, anyway, what was I? Th oh, I was talking about Sekiro. Yeah, um, I got so fucking stuck on uh, the Guardian Eight that I was like, I will come back tomorrow. And then the next day, I was like, you know what? I'm gonna give it another two days. Then two days later, I was like, I'm still not feeling it. And so then it was a week, and then two weeks, and then three weeks, and then um, sooner or later, an entire year passed. And, uh, I was like, welp. Oh, actually, I was like, huh, you know what? I never finished Sekiro. And then I went back to Sekiro. And then I was like, is this really good, actually? And then I blitzed through it, and I didn't even have any trouble with the Guardian Ape. And I just fucking beat it in, like, a week. I got stuck on Genichiro for a while, and then I got stuck on the final boss for a while. But other than that, I didn't really have much difficulty at all. Because I'm an extremely good games person. I'm very good at games. I don't know what happened. I went through some shit that changed my brain chemistry at, like, the start of 2019. Um, and I'm pretty sure that's what's made me a good game. A good, a good gamesman. A good gamer. A good gameser. -er. Crash. I remember where some secret things are. That guy's a secret hollow. Notice these guys hanging off. I... Do they just chill there all day waiting for random heroes to come and get uh, smashed up? Also, if you do it right, you can um, knock them off the edge before they have a chance to do anything. So, that's the real trick. Hopefully I will get a better weapon soon. I actually hate the Morningstar. It does decent damage and it has bleed buildup, but it's um, bad for reasons that I will not explain. By which I mean I just don't personally like it. It has a slow moveset and um, it leaves you open on your swings, which as someone who is used to dodge rolling out of cancel animations, it's like, nope, disapprove. Now, dodge rolling out of cancel animations is not actually a thing. That's just some words that I may be in an order. Bye. Let's see if I can get this one too. Yep, so long. Sucks to be you. See, I told you they go sick house if you give them a half a chance. Come on guys, give me like a straight sword or something. Actually, these don't drop that. I need to go kill some proper hollows. Let's see if I can get a short sword off the guys upstairs. So my death earlier was the um, the sacrificial first pancake that primes the pan before you do your proper pancakes. I vow not to die until I get to Cap Redeeming from this point on. Um, in honour of my old ability to just go through the entire game up to that point without dying. Yeah, well, you know, it's an artifact of the fact that time is breaking down. They keep teleporting around and um, 
disappearing and coming in and out. It's definitely not um, game engine faults or anything like that. It's definitely a an intentional thematic twist that they've added to the animations. Ah, my partner has stumbled out of her bedroom. She looks remarkably like the um, the hollows that I've just been killing. As she staggers over to her computer, gives me the finger for saying these terrible things. I really hope one of these drops something decent. Having some humanity- being human makes it more likely that they'll drop things, and having the liquid humanity in your- in your existential handbag, which is what I'm going to start calling an inventory. It's just not an inventory, it's like your, your stats bar at the top. But, um, yeah, existential handbag. That's definitely a sensible term to call it. I always forget about this guy. He always gets me in the back, but I got him in the back this time. Anyway, um, yeah, having liquid humanity, which will stack up to 99, and it is the large number in the upper left-hand corner, is, um, humanity that you get from using items or from, uh, just randomly dropped from certain kinds of enemies. It has a few different things it does. I think it increases your resistances as well. See? I told you there's still players playing this game. Look at this guy. He looks sensible. He looks like a reasonable advent- He's got the same- Okay, well that's um, Morningstar number three. Um, yeah, I'm not going to summon him in to help me because we've both got Morningstar, so clearly one of us will have to change. Because um, that's the rules when you wear fashion. Eighteen eighty-seven. That's a good number for souls. Do I have literally any fucking weapons other than the Morning Star? No, just the mace. Oh, the mace actually does more damage. It just doesn't have the bleed. I'm gonna go back to it. See if I prefer it. That's a faster swing, definitely. I feel like playing Sekiro has just fundamentally made me better at games in general. However, I definitely also have significantly gotten better at games in the past two years. Um, it's been a really consistent, gradual increase, and I don't know what the fuck is up with it. Don't know why I'm just so much better now. But I am. I am absolutely very good at this. These guys are pretty easy to parry, which is going to be another hubris moment, I suspect. Nope, here we go. Haha! <laughs> I'm amazing at everything. One thing about hubris is that um, if you're really, really good at things, you will never ever fail. Come on, please give me something better than the Morning Star. I hate these slow ass weapons. Now, is it worth trying to kill this guy before I get a decent weapon? That's the real question. This is the first merchant well, in the game. Now. You seem to have your wits about you. Hmm? Then you are a welcome customer. I trade for souls. Everything's for sale. Not your fucking bathtub. <laughs> I, um, I do love this guy very much, and half the time I don't even kill him. <sighs> what a waste. Go and... Go, oh, fuck you then. Okay. So, like, um, he's the first person who will sell you things. He's also... He has such a nasal voice, it's so weird. I love it. He sounds like nerds I've met. Oh. You again. In the 90s. I hope you've brought plenty of souls. <laughs> and again, of course, the creepy laughs. The traditional Dark Souls creep laugh. So, do I have... Hmm, I could... Do I want to spend money on a better weapon? I mean, something will show up eventually. I'd usually... I used to buy a bow here, but then I used to just zoom off. And... Oh my god, don't say things like that. How old are you? I'm old as shit. Okay. Uh, but yeah, no, I normally kill him for his sword, because I'm, I'm a weird collector and I like to have everything. He talks to Yulia. A lot of people wonder who Yulia is supposed to be. It might be another merchant, or it might be my flatmate who is pointing at herself, but who is named Julia, not Yulia, before she gets too excited. Um, but my personal favourite is that it's, <laughs> it's his bathtub, because he pats it periodically, so... Um... I'm not going to kill him right now because I don't want to try and do that with the shitty weapon I have. And I also don't want to pay him for a weapon. Because if I pay him and then kill him, I'll just feel bad. 
Um, that's the kind of thing capitalists do. And we do not approve of them. As I said earlier, these guys aren't worth parrying just because you can kill them in one hit anyway. And uh, you don't want to be vulnerable to them just absolutely murking you. What does this say? Death? As usual, the messages are completely cryptic. I mean, unprovoked murder for gain is kind of video games. That's just what it is. Like, if you're not comfortable with unprovoked murder for gain, then you kind of just have to play, like, walking simulators. I don't know if you just heard in the background, but someone suggested Stardew Valley, which has a lot of unprovoked murder in it. <laughs> Imminent rare indeed. Dynamic entry from the left there. That's not the left, that's the right. Oh hey, they have that moveset too. I always forget that. Let's not die because I made a promise that I wouldn't. Uh, what was I even talking about? I don't know. But yeah, no, you basically just have to play walking simulators and not even all of those. Maybe some visual novels, but again, there's quite a few of those with unprovoked murder for gain. Depending on the kind of visual novel, I guess. I love how open these guys leave themselves. Random zombies with swords are just as valid of persons as some guy who laughs at you. Besides, he told me to jump off a cliff, so really, I'm completely justified if I murder him. That is, that's how the castle doctrine works, right? Ooh, lovely. Uh, I'm being gestured at. Is What's the chicken still meant to be cooking? Yeah, the chicken is still meant to be cooking, but I should probably check on it. So, I'm going to come back in literally like two seconds. <laughs> I could have muted my mic, but I didn't, so that's fun. And I have returned. So, yeah, my delicious cocker van looks like it's probably a lot more tasty now that it's had like another hour and a bit of stewing. Short sword, fantastic! I made the correct decision! Just like all of my decisions. Um, I don't like the short sword very much, but it's a lot better than the other options. I love the janky animation- not animations, the, the ragdolling you get. What is he even stuck on? I've never seen this happen before. Also time to grab a better shield, I think. See, I would make a cask of Amontillado joke, but he's not inside. So if anything, this is Montresor, and he's just been um, the victim of hubris, which is the theme of the game, right? No, no it's not. Uh, East-West shield has 88% physical damage reduction, and Caduceus shield is worse, but it's better magic. And this one has 93. I do like that one, it looks cool. What time is it in my world? My game world? It's like... I always thought it was mid-morning. A kind of a watery spring morning. But um, if you mean where I live, it's like... 9 o'clock at night? Oh hey, this guy's still here. What's his name? <laughs> now that's confidence. This guy knows exactly who he is and what he's here to do. There we go. Time for lightning mode. I will never lose again. Oh hey, I got humanity out of that one. That's good as well. I assume you're referring to the guy named Hero, but um... That's really just what a hero is, isn't it? If you go back to classical literature, a hero is just someone who's willing to take what they want without repercussions. Or able to overcome the repercussions that other people try and inflict. Or, if you like um, incredibly fantastic, um, weird, silly video games rock band the Proto Men, a hero is just a man who knows he's free. Oh, I always forget about this guy. Haha. Stab. Stabity stab. I win at games. 
so I think there's nothing else in here. There's just this. Yeah, that room I've already looted. I mean, checked for unguarded value. No, that's just looting. I still need a ranged weapon. Actually, did I pick up the crossbow earlier? I did, but you can't use that manually. You have to aim and hope. Ah, shit. Aim and hope would be a good name for a protagonist. I'm used to the long sword's range. <laughs> Using the short sword, I tend to fall a bit short, surprisingly, surprisingly. I do like that I've managed to bait them into hitting me, which is not how it works. Because um, AI gonna AI it doesn't really care what I do. I mean, I'm pretty sure that the game doesn't really have a an opinion about whether or not you've got your shield up or what. Other players will. But I'm pretty sure the AI doesn't really react to mule behaviour at all. Can I kick this guy off? Bye. Oh no! I mean, bombs are one step away from magic, which is basically cheating. Um, I say having a spell equipped, which I'd forgotten about until this very moment. I mean, religion's not really magic. <laughs> uh, are they saying the weakness is to kick him off? Or are they just suggesting that I drop off of here? Because one of the beautiful things about Dark Souls is that every part of it is visible from somewhere else that's relevant. All of these places are places you can go. We're going to run across there later. We're going to run across there later. We're going to explore that later. And then even later still, we're going to go down there where there is more things to do. All of these, as you can see, actually have physics. Uh, they're places you can go, apart from some of these buttresses and structural components. That is where we fought Spearman a little while ago. Anyway, I think I've got some fire bombs with these guys, which is good for me because I like fire and bombs. The two great tastes that go good together. My voice might be a little weird today, or my speaking might be strange, because I am having fatigue from my latest weird long COVID bullshit situation. Which means that I'm even sleepier and stranger than usual, but that's fine. Now, see, normally I would just shoot these guys in the head because I would normally already have a bow, but... What is the easiest place to get a bow? Is it going for the, the longbow in Darkwood Garden? I think it probably is. Uh, or just buying one off the merchant. Hey, he used a healing potion. That's my that's my thing. That's my shtick. I do appreciate that you're invulnerable during your animations, because otherwise you'd basically never do it. But it does look kind of silly when you're fighting multiple guys. It's like, yeah, would you mind holding on for a sec? I have to finish stabbing this man. Excuse me, could you hold this? I need to eviscerate an individual. How far does I have to go to trigger this? Ah, there we go. I always used to wonder why that knock in the uh, in the safety wall at the side was there, because if you drop down there, there's nothing there, and the only way to get back is to use a homeward bone, or um, use the dark sign to teleport, which is a thing the dark sign lets you do for reasons that are unclear. Ah, I need- do I need the president's key to get in there? I think I do. If I do, I need to run all the way back and grab a thing off of the guy. Yeah, okay. Or it might be the master key that unlocks that. Hmm. I knew there was something I forgot to buy from the merchant. Oh well. This is just like real life. I usually get back from the shops and discover I've forgotten the main thing I went there for. And instead have a bag of donuts. longer than I usually do, but then I haven't played this in a long time. I keep being criticism of myself. Ow. I, <laughs> I should be proud. Actually, I'm just as... I, I keep vacillating wildly between intense hubristic arrogance and um, vague self-deprecation, which is an interesting tension to use to fuel my existence. Because really, at our cores, we're all fueled by the... Thank you, kind. <laughs> dissonance between our best self and our worst self, which is why most of us are our average selves. That means nothing. I, um, I'm extremely good at philosophy, as you can see. 
still, it does generate a useful tension. That's a shortcut for later. Anyway, here we are, most of the way through the Undead Burg, and I have not yet died. Apart from that one time I died, but we don't talk about that. Oh, uh, I nearly forgot. I think my memory is way worse since the aforementioned neurochemistry rebalancing. Oh hey, that's another. Those are nice. That means another player has um, kindled a bonfire nearby, and then anyone who is in their orbit, because... Okay, so that means that probably someone put a message down saying something that was untrue, and someone else put a message down saying liar. The problem with that is that messages that relate to other messages, like the messages that appear in your world are just pulled randomly. So if you have one person's uh, messages, you probably don't have the message they were responding to. Do I have any good gestures yet? No. Uh, I do, however, have bombs. Oh, hey, I've got knives as well. That's useful. Got some bombs off the guys I killed because murder for money is, as we have established, the fundamental component of all video games. So I'm going to try and sneak up on him. Now, for once, this won't be murder for gain because this guy is not really alive. Can I get a backstab, please? Fuck, no I can't. Time to run. Bye! The fun fact about that Black Knight is that on my, um, on my first ever playthrough of this game, or at least my first serious playthrough where I was actually trying to do it properly, the first time I ever completed the game, that run, um, on my way through this at the start of the game, I killed that guy and he dropped his sword. Uh, you may not know this, but the Black Knight uh, sword is really, really good. It's one of the better items in the game. And um, so then I built a strength character around that and I used that one sword for the entire rest of the game. And I had no idea how rare it was to get the drop off of him. It's like a 1% drop chance that he'll drop a weapon and it's like another low drop chance that it'll be that one specifically. Actually, no, I think they all drop their... Um, their specific weapons, but there's like a really low chance that they'll drop anything. And then another low chance that it's a weapon. Oh wow, we're all an incredibly lucky group of people. Anyway, so I'm going to do a drop attack on this guy and fuck he blocked it. I always forget that that can happen sometimes if you are unlucky. Like, normally I just run in a cycle drop, drop attacking him over and over to cheese him because he he's tough. You're kind of meant to come back and fight him later, but if you can get what he guards, it's very useful. The number of times the blue teardrop ring has saved me is, like, immense. Yeah, no, the gargoyles go down easy if you have the right weapons. Um, but they're not that difficult, even if you just have normal weapons. Oh, come on! Has this been patched? I'm used to this guy just going down, like... Eh, maybe I'll try dropping some bombs on him and see what happens. I basically never use the black fire bombs for anything else, so... Let's see if I can catch him on the head. Nope, that is a waste of a very powerful weapon. So is that. Okay, this is dumb. I'm going. Bye. You, sir, have been very ill-conducive to a good stream. I'm just going to cut... Yeah, I mean, I could always parry, but he will kill me in one hit if I let him. Can he even fit through these doors? Is he going to chase me all the way to the boss? Fuck, he is as well. Oh, God. I think he's gone. I think he's gone. Is that him? There he is. I can hit him here. Let's see. Oh. Okay. Well, that's fine. Um, using firebombs is cheating anyway, as we established earlier, because it's basically just magic. Shit, there he is. May have caused myself a problem here. Might be in a bit of difficulty, lads. Fortunately for me, um, NPC pathfinding frequently breaks around stairs because they're not quite sure what to do. I can just get backstabs on this guy until he's dead. Which is another form of cheese. The thing about these guys is that their um, recovery animation from the, from the backstab is frequently the right length that you can just get another backstab if you watch and know what you're doing. I mean, he shouldn't kill me because I am a priest. However, I'm a priest of stabbing him. That is my, that is my sole tenet of my faith at the moment. Ah, oh, shit! The magic turtle. What the fuck are they called? <laughs> oh, when I'm tired and my brain isn't working right, I forget what words are. Um, and that definitely was not a magic turtle. Fuck. Bye. I'm out. Ollie's outy. Fuck off. Now, legally, he has to let me heal. Otherwise, it's entrapment. 
Well, that was close. So I'm popping the glugs of this. Conveniently, I don't have to go back and uh, heal before the boss because this boss is really easy. I just need to not die on this guy. Ah, okay. I hope it's not too loud when I freak out. But yeah, um, the crystal lizards, that was, that's what they're called. There's one that hides in that box. I can come back and get it again later, but there's only a handful of them in the game and they drop really useful crafting components. Uh, come on, guy. You're the world's longest fight. Gee, it sure would be great if I had a 100% damage resistance shield to fight this incredibly powerful enemy, wouldn't it? Come on, get locked into a long animation. That'll be useful for me and not useful for you. Which is why you should do it. Well, that was a faster turn than I expected. Hmm. Can you do drop attacks? Because that feels like cheating to me. Oh, I'm so close to beating him. If I die, I'm going to be very disappointed in myself. Can I hit him with grenades from here? Yes! Fire in the hole, buddy. That should be the end of him. Maybe one more hit. And that is how you beat him if you are bad at Dark Souls. Um, I hope you all appreciate me deliberately playing badly to show you what it's like when you take forever to beat something that should be quite easy. But um, you're all very welcome. really convenient to be wearing a headset mic. I, I appreciate the better quality of my tabletop mic, but it is nice to not have to be careful about leaning forwards when I'm like focusing, because I am one of those people who just leans really far forwards when it's time to fight a boss. Uh, yep, that does work. That is how we cast- uh, I mean, that is how we say a prayer. Um, and then completely by coincidence are healed. That is definitely- not magic. To be honest, I'd have stayed in the C of E longer if they would teach me healing spells. I mean, healing prayers, healing requests. It's a guy. You know what, I'm gonna use the rest of my bombs on, bombs on him as well. Uh, he's not difficult to fight properly, but I can't really be bothered to give him the time of day. He's got a really wide window at his feet that lets you, um, unless he kicks you in the face like that. <laughs> that lets you, uh, just kind of, um, stab him a whole bunch. But the other thing about him is that you can actually trick him into jumping off the side of the thing. Don't ask me what this thing is called. The rampart, maybe? Fuck up his ramparts. That'd be very funny if he was made out of a sheep instead of a cow. But he's a tourist demon, as you can see. Oh, I'm out of. Oh, fuck! See, I nearly cheesed myself for his benefit, the way that you can make him cheese sometimes. Which is hilarious, if you ask me. I think he might be weak to fire, or it might just be that black fire bombs do lots of damage and he's not a tough enemy. Now, let's not break my rule and die, that would be stupid. Get wrecked, fucker. See? Oh yeah, weakness plunging attack. If you do want to um, cheese him the official way, what you do is you climb up there, wait for him to run to the bottom, and then do a drop attack on his head, which will knock off about half of his health bar in one hit. If you want to cheese him the potentially unintended way, you can fight him here, and then when he does a backwards jump, if you're standing in the right place, he'll jump off the cliff and die. Um, oh, that's pretty. Yeah, no, they should be weak to lightning, because they're demons, but some of the type weaknesses in this game are strange. So yeah, as I said, um, a lot of the places in this game are visible from other places, and almost everything you can see is somewhere you will eventually go, including up there. But yeah, that's the first boss boss. 
Alright, I hope you had a nice time. Um, I'll catch you later probably sometime, maybe? I don't know how much longer I'm gonna go. This is just a random unplanned thing, so I think I'll probably play until I get bored. Time to meet the best guy in the game. Cool, Hollow Knight is 6pm uh, on Fridays and Tuesdays. Thanks for thanks for being a cool guy in my chat. Ah, hello. You don't look hollow, far from it. I am Soler of Astora, an adherent of the Lord of Sunlight. Now that I am undead, I have come to this great land, the birthplace of Lord Gwyn, to seek my very own son. You find that strange? Well, you should. No need to hide your reaction. I get that look all the time. Thank you. I hope you had a good time too. I will see you around probably, although I have no idea who you are on the server. Oh, aha. So I didn't scare you. I have a proposition if you have a moment. Siegmeier is also best guy. Um, Laurentius is your friend. Our fates appear to be in a land brimming with hollows. And, Could that um, really be mere chance? So Siegmeier is also your friend, but in a different way. But Solaire is well, then, actually in love with you eventually. We are amidst the flow. The vet does not that should make a difference. I'm just going to skip all this because it's long. But yeah, Solaire is delightful. Solaire has less pompousness than uh, Siegmeier. Like they're all great. Like you're like okay. So you're criticizing. Uh, the decision to call him the best guy. That doesn't mean those aren't also great guys. There are, there's three good bros in this game. It's just that he's the the broest one. And like Laurentius doesn't help you with boss fights. Um, neither does neither does Siegmeier. I don't think. I don't think there's any summons you can, times you can summon him. But um, actually, like the three of them and you rocking up to the pub for a night would be amazing. So I'm gonna try very hard not to die in a fire now, which is. Um, a tradition in video games. Fuck. This is yet another of the game's nasty tricks, although it is at least foreshadowed by the fact that the last time we crossed a bridge a dragon nearly landed on us then as well. Oh, I'm actually nearly out of healing. Awfully convenient, isn't it, that there is a shortcut? Progress in this game is gated primarily by shortcuts and bonfires. Bonfires being um, respawn points and uh, shortcuts being like cuts, but they're shorter. So if I, I could probably level up. I could boost my miracles. I think I'll boost my. Boost my uh, bleh, bleh, bleh. I think I'll boost my. I think I'll boost my. I mean, really, what could be better than this? Just, you know, bros being bros. Um, bros handling each other's swords. Bros polishing one another's belt buckles. Um, I'm sorry, I'm completely thinking about something else. Let's go! So, that dragon you can actually fight. Um, but it takes a while and it's not really worth it for me at the moment because the main benefit is if you cut off his tail you can get a powerful weapon that's kind of cheesy for this level of the game and if you have a bow and arrow you can just shoot it here until it falls off which I mean probably implies things about the health of that dragon but it's not like anyone's been taking care of it it's just a wild one it's a feral dragon it's it's not even technically a dragon um hi guy you've been waiting here for a thousand years, just for me to come and stab you. Standing there like, yes, I'm gonna do it. This time, this time I'm gonna do it. I can I can succeed, I can do it, I can I can get the stab. I've been training, I've been practicing. And then See this guy is a fucking pain in the ass to fight because he is uh, opposite you here, and you play this game right-handed usually, which means that you swing from the right, which means that this wall is in the way, so when you swing your attack at him, you go... Well, it didn't happen that time, but you often... Yeah, you bonk off the wall. So it's time for the toughest boss fight in the early game, um, which is these three rats. It's not technically a boss fight, but they are really difficult to fight here. Because... 
they do poison, and you don't really have any resistance to poison at this stage. It is easy to trick them into falling off the ledge, which is my favourite thing to do. Let's see if I can get... Oh! Once again, I'm used to the longsword reach. Ah, uh, there we go. Bye! There's one left in there, but um, they can kind of stack their attacks and stagger you or knock you off the edge, which is extremely frustrating, even if you are right next to where the uh, convenient shortcut is. Yeah, I mean, it's a drake rather than a dragon, technically, because dragons are a kind of a thing, and big wi winged lizard that breathes fire is not the same thing as a dragon. There's another black knight up here, but um, I'm a bit scared of that one, so I'll come back to him later. It would be really convenient for me if you guys would drop a decent sword. Any luck? Nope. So there's like a million guys here. Um... They'll all respawn, but that magic ball won't. Now, I remembered that as being an unarmoured ball. And then there's one that's more armoured later on. I thought it just had a big armoured helmet, but uh, unarmoured body. But it looks from here like it is armoured. Everyone knows this, but if you kick someone with a shield, you can knock their shield out of the way and then stab them, which is a useful fact that you can use in your own life day to day. Next time you see Barry at the shop, you can be like, oh, Barry, he turns around. He's got his shield raised. You kick him, you stab him. Problem solved. Yeah, you see? Girl like substance agrees. It's the easiest way to deal with people who have shields that you don't like, which I'm sure will not be a useful fact in the coming future that we have, where the police have shields constantly. Oh, I probably shouldn't stand in the way of people with guns either. Or crossbows, which are basically the same thing. A crossbow is just a gun with pretensions. Oh no! Now, technically I did make it all the way through the undead bag, because this is the undead parish up here. So... That's less than convenient, but I should be able to get my bloodstain back at least. Actually, I should kindle this bonfire so I have more healing. Which means I need to use another one of these. I didn't break my oath. I promised that I wouldn't die until I got through the undead berg. Which I technically did. Because I was technically in the undead parish. Technically. Being technically correct is the best kind of correct. I think everyone agrees. But it is actually harder to do this talking. So it's. I'm proud. I'm pleased. I think I did well. Uh, right, Kindle. That's what I need. Because um, Amazon really do have their teeth into everything these days. It's basically impossible to do anything on the internet these days without um, Amazon having some kind of um, involved service. Uh, I really hate that they've actually retroactively added Amazon um, integration to this game. It really sucks that you have to Kindle things now. Um, it was much better back when it was stoking. Because you could be like, I've gotten stoked. Can I sneak up on him this time? Another thousand years have passed and he's like, okay, this time I'm ready. This time, this time I'm, I'm going to hear them coming like I did last time, but this time I'm not, I'm not going to do a big attack that's easy to parry. I'm going to, oh fuck, he heard me talking, fuck. Textbook. Oh, I didn't get my parry. That sucks. Oh, okay, for God's <laughs> Um, can that be my creepy laugh? I feel like it's an ordinary nice laugh. Well, this is Dark Souls, the game in which you... Uh, you know, you live by the falling down the hole or you die by the falling down the hole. Right. Off we go back up to where I died like an idiot. So what happened there was that I was misaligned or slightly too far back that um, I didn't actually 
get the parry. I didn't lock into the parry animation. Instead, what it did was just play my ordinary attack animation, which is unfortunate. You know, actually, I think if you take your shoes off, you're quieter and sneakier. I've just realised. Ah, oh, fuck! That means I've lost my bloodstain. That's frustrating. I had, I had, <laughs> I had so many souls in that handbag. I'm just gonna win all this guy to death. You, sir, are a bastard. Your behaviour is unacceptable. Can I kick him off the edge? No. Okay, I'll just wait for a parry. I'll just die from waiting for a parry. There we go. I could try and come up with a creepy laugh. But let me just... Okay. Oh, wow. They saw me. Okay, right. Down the hole. Down the hole. Bye. You too. Off you go. But no, off that. There. Let's see if we can just. Come on. How are you still? Okay, there we go. But yeah, I'm wondering if I should try and figure out my creepy laugh before the next time I do this. I kind of feel like having a creepy laugh to end conversations with should really be something that arises organically, um, just over the course of your life. It should be. Something like a personal aesthetic. It's something you cultivate, but something that comes from somewhere inside you rather than something you've chosen to have arbitrarily. Give me your sword, sir. Your sword? I mean, my main hope was that the rat would um, ricochet off my shield and fall down, which is how that works. So that guy's irritating because he starts to walk forwards because he will... You can just get close enough to aggro him without aggroing the boar. Which means that he will come and fight you, but that also means that you have to wait for him to come to fight you so that you don't also aggro the boar. Oh, see, I was slightly misaligned again. Unfortunate. Stop hopping. There's no hop for these guys. I love the kind of sleepy, dozy way they walk. They kind of have the energy of slightly confused, but in an adorable way, old men. Barry, you've fallen down. You're alright, Barry. Oh, did you knock him over? That's not okay. All old men in my mind's ear have regional accents. I'm not sure why. I assume it's a British thing. Let's see if I can lure this guy over here instead of getting shot with crossbows. Parry him on stairs? I don't think I can. Can I parry him like this? Give me an attack. There we go. Okay, fantastic. Now, the flaw in my plan before was that I didn't do that. Having done that is what's let me succeed this time, I think. Did I kill that guy or not? He kind of just muted himself to the left. And that's not the left, that's the right. I'm only 30 goddamn years old. You think I'd have learned this stuff by now? So that guy seems to have got himself pathfindingly caught on the ball, which is extremely entertaining to me. There's another misaligned one. I'm not sure what's up with that. Now I think he has detached himself. Oh! He's got a crossbow. Um, those must have been the two other crossbow guys that are apparently here. No, that's the wrong place to do that. That is definitely the wrong place to do that. So, the advantage to having the alluring skulls is that you can use it to lure the boar into the fire. <laughs> yeah, getting stuck on a pig's ass on my way up a bridge is literally my Tuesday night. Um, so if I switch to the alluring skull and I shoot it into the right place, it'll lure the boar into the fire and then I won't have to worry about fighting it. I can just have delicious wild boar. Oh, that's perfect. That's exactly where it needs to go. Right, now go stand in the fire. Sir, that's not appropriate. It's really, really quite rude of you to smash him without dying. Or, whoa, without killing him. You can also get drop attacks on the ball for an easy kill, or you can, um, if you are playing a little bit more respectfully, get him to charge at you and then dodge out of the way like every boss fight in every 
open world platformer ever made. Now the fun thing about that pig's pig's ass actually is that for some reason it's unarmored. All of the rest of it is armored, but it's gotten missing ass plate with the tail and stuff come out from behind it. If you maneuver around behind it, you can see that it just full on has an ass. Ah yes, let me see you bear those cheeks as the iconic line from Amazing Anime Gurren Lagann goes. So yeah, um, we are pushing our way up slowly but surely towards the gargoyle boss. I am still forgetting to talk about clever things like thematics, but that's fine because that's not what this is for. This is just a random ass impromptu stream where I do whatever. I don't think I can ever go back and redo that long, long let's play where I talk about all of the themes and the interesting detail. I could conceivably go back and finish it, and in fact I am vaguely planning on doing a... Um, vaguely planning on doing some kind of a wittily titled SCA finishes Dark Souls or something someday, but I don't think I could play through the entire game again and talk about how amazing and wonderful and beautiful it is, because I've kind of... I still hold by everything I've ever said about it, but I don't know how to just spin it and make it work anymore. I've spent too long thinking about it, it's all kind of drained away out of the side of my head. Which I should probably see a doctor about. But yeah, um, the assless chaps, assless armor chaps is... That's nothing, that's not a thing. You're right that there's a joke, but I don't think we're the ones to tell it. Imminent path? Master? Strange. It's the mystery key, not the mastery key. So, I think I will try and get to the Belfry Gargoyles and beat them and then call that a night. Which, uh, there's like two areas left. There's the rest of the parish at the top of here and then there's the, the other place. Um, the actual, uh, what's it called? Not a castle. <sighs> like a castle but for priests. A priest castle. Um, a house where God lives but that is like made of stone. What even is that called? A church! Thank you! Um, yeah. <laughs> it's It's been a busy day. My uh, mental problems are showing a little bit more than usual. This is why I normally record um, singular episodes, because I get to look slightly more compost when I have mentors when I have had the ability to do research before playing. Not that there's any point in researching Dark Souls, because really that would just be watching my own series back again. Plug, plug. I can definitely sneak up on this guy. It'd be amazing if I got a Baldur's side sword out of one of these guys, but I would honestly just prefer a standard long sword. These guys are really good at parrying, which is difficult to fight. But this gives us the Night Shield, which is the first 100% resistance shield in the game. A lot of people buy the metal shield that the Undead Merchant sells because they don't realise that you can get one here. Really, like, if you're playing at a proper speed, like 10 minutes later. But yeah, so, um... We are now up in the Upper Church. Which I'm sure should have a proper name, like an Abbey or something, but... I mean, actually, there's a very important and technical difference between a church and an abbey and a... And the other oh, fuck, I'm being invaded. Interesting. Okay. Well, I need to deal with this first, but I am definitely going to get my ass kicked. I am wearing extremely starter, completely unupgraded uh, gear. And I haven't even bothered to min-max my um, equipment load percentage, so I'm probably going to be conf Oh, hey, the bell's gone. In case you don't know, that bell ringing means that uh, another player has successfully beaten the Belfry Gargoyle boss fight because the objective of this part of the game is to uh, ring the bell at the top and at the bottom of the world. And you hear other players doing it when they do it, if they happen to be in your orbit, because the game has this weird interesting system of like randomly picking players to sort of be in a server together to some extent. I wonder where that Russian named fellow is waiting for me. Let's 
sounded like I heard a gate opening. And if that was the gate behind me, I wonder if that means he did it. I didn't think that, um... I didn't think the spectres could interact with things in the world. I thought they could only interact with other players. So if I have been invaded, that means he's come around behind me. I mean, I've definitely been invaded. I saw the, saw the sign and heard the noise. But then, does that mean he's opened up this gate? Can they do that? Are they allowed? Oh my god, it looks like he has. What the fuck? I had no idea. Well, you learn something new every day, I guess. Anyway, the only way for me to progress right now is to go through here, I think, and fight this guy, which is risky, but whatever. Or I could just parry him and kill him in one hit. That works too. Or, well, two hits. Sucks to be you, guy. Now, this should lead down to where the gate should be open if he's opened it. It's also where the halberd is, which is a weapon I never bother to use. That gate should not be open, what the fuck? Oh, this is genuinely creepy. I'm having live creepypasta. Let me see if I can catch him. Yep. So yeah, that's the other player and he's dead now, so that's fine. I'm kidding, that's not- oh, what the fuck? Uh, but yeah, no, that is absolutely not the other player. For those of you who have not played this game, the other player will be a glowing red phantom. Who looks exactly like that. Fucking hell, he was the box. He was the box all along. He must be using chameleon. What is he? he oh, and he's cast a spell to make his sword invisible, which is very cheating. Like, he's definitely going to kill me. There's very little I can do to avoid it. Well, maybe I could die to this guy. Maybe I could let the Balder Knight kill me just as a... Just as some kind of a flex. Is he taking damage? Why is he taking damage? Oh, he must be using... Not Flash Sweat, what's it called? There's a spell you can cast that, make, that makes you take damage but deal more damage. If I just evade him enough, he'll damage himself a fair bit. Uh, to be honest, I feel like people who invade people who have a much lower soul level are being dicks anyway, so if I make him work for it, that's the only real recourse I have. <laughs> yeah, Power Within can't kill you completely, but it will eat all of your health bars. So if I wait long enough, I might- Oh, fuck! Well, at least I made him work for it, and that's the important thing. I'm not terrible at PvP, but usually it helps if you are not um, massively outclassed by someone who has completely upgraded their gear and cast uh, high level spells. Because there is a clever trick that people can do, basically, where they... Um, do I have enough humanity to be human again? I like to be human as much as I can during the game. But obviously if you get killed by someone invading you, you lose your humanity, because that's what happens when you die. Oops. But yeah, um, the way that the PvP stuff works is that you can invade people who are in your orbit and um, it sort of puts you in a bracket based on your soul level, which is based on how much you've leveled up. Um, as you can see, my soul level is 13. And um, I think the lowest bracket caps out at like 70 or something. It's been a while since I looked this stuff up. But um, it might be even lower. But uh, the thing is, it doesn't factor in your equipment, which means that y if you know what you're doing, Dark Souls is pretty easy to beat without leveling up very much. So what you can do is level up to exactly the level that keeps you in the lowest bracket, then use all of your cool gear that you have because you've played through the game, and upgrade it all to the highest level, and then use that for fighting random newbies, which is widely regarded a dick move. But is also something that people do, because internet men like to do dick moves, I guess. Not always men, but usually men, let's be honest. Still, um... I forget who it was who was asking if this game even still has any multiplayer component, but it absolutely does, as you will now have seen. I think it was 1-1 one, one into 0. Um, but yeah, so, um... 
these guys are less of rats than the kind of players who do that sort of thing. There is actually kind of an orthodoxy of the best soul level to be at for um, PvP stuff, but that's kind of in <laughs> intended to have some kind of power parity between people. So the expectation if you're doing PvP properly, or like respectfully, is that you... Um... Oh, I forgot about the other rat. It's fine, I escaped. Uh, the expectation in that context is that you are, you know, at a specific soul level bracket, which is usually sort of a net, a decision across the uh, the entire PvP community. There's just an orthodoxy about where it's the most fun. And then um, be at that level with whatever your maxed equipment that you've decided is what works best for you. And not... Okay, this is gonna, this is gonna take forever. You know, I could probably parry and kill this guy while I wait for that guy to approach. Oh, the timing on that. This looks to be you, barreled, huh? This area is easier now that the boar isn't here because I can just run through. <clears throat> it's also easier now that the gate is open thanks to um, James McDickSplash who decided to kill me for no reason. I mean, the thing about rats is they really just have to put up with whatever the fuck you want to do. Um, they should have thought of that before they became rats. Are you gonna... Usually if you stand out of their reach, they'll draw swords and come down and get you. Can be a little bit of AI manipulation, but these guys don't seem to want to right now. But screw it, they can't actually chase me, so it doesn't matter. I can feel my voice getting a bit fucked up. Um, one of the things about surviving long COVID is that you end up with, like, things that cause problems. I used to be able to talk for hours without much of an issue, but now if I talk for more than a certain period of time, my voice starts to go all crunchy, and so does the rest of me. That's not a sentence that makes sense. Why is this boulder? Conveniently, we are very close to where I was heading. Oh shit, the other one. Oh, ah! <laughs> was he the guy in the church? Did he see me? He shouldn't have done. Ow. Am I human? I am. I must have gotten a liquid humanity off of something. Alright, let's hopefully him dealt with. disapprove of these guys generally being better at parrying than me. Actually, they haven't parried yet at all, so I don't know what I'm talking about. But I'm definitely starting to flag, so I should definitely go fight the boss and be done with this for today. But I have actually been having a really good time, and I had a better turnout than I expected. For just a random unannounced or un unplanned thing. Oh, only the buckler ones? Okay, that's good to know. I genuinely thought it was something they all do. I could have been going sick house on that guy and been fine. Oh, I'm gonna die. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, but yeah, uh, I think that's where I'll stop for tonight, actually. I'm not going to bother trying to push my way on up to the gargoyles. I can definitely feel myself getting too tired to keep going. <sighs> yeah, I know that they do put their, like, rapier up forwards towards you to get the parry thing going, but... Um... I... Oh, yeah, no, just, uh, I need to stop talking soon because I am in physical pain from it, so that's cool. Uh, but I have had a good time. I hope you all have had a good time, uh, the handful of you who are still here. Um, I hope you will come and join me on Tuesdays and Fridays for the scheduled streams, and go follow me on Twitter if you want to see when I have random unscheduled streams. But that's going to be all from me for now. Thank you so much for watching! <laughs>